guys, so every few years I put out a favorite books video. I did one in the summer of 2012 and then 2014, and now three years later I finally have an updated favorite books video. Some books are the same, some were omitted and some were added. I still love all the books that I mentioned last time, and you are going to hear some repeats if you happen to be around in 2014, um, but I'm just going to jump right into them. I have mentioned this so many times on this channel, but my favorite book of all time is The Stranger by Albert Camus. I also have another copy and a Cliff Notes version that I got at a used bookstore, an illustrated version, and lo and behold, a graphic book version. The Stranger is about a man named Merceau who doesn't really care about much. He commits a shitty act in the middle of the book and then has to deal with the repercussions in the latter half. This is my favorite book of all time because it kind of just taught me how to deal with life and how I don't have to matter and um, it was my first real introduction into absurdism. And my favorite quote from this book is for the first time in that night alive with signs and stars, I open myself to the gentle indifference of the world. Finding it so much like myself, so like a brother really, I felt that I had been happy and that I was happy again. The next book I want to talk about is Diary by Chuck Palahniuk. This book is about a woman named Misty Wilmont who is basically stuck in this conspiracy where she has to keep painting and can't stop painting and it's just like this prophecy that has been foretold on this island for decades and generations and generations. Chuck Palahniuk overall is my favorite author of all time. I love his style. I love the way that he will repeat a line later in a book and it'll hit you really hard. Um, and this book basically just taught me that we all leave a footprint and that that's really important and special. And my favorite line from this book is, we're all of us immortal, we couldn't die if we wanted to. Now, Polonik is my favorite author, but I know a lot of people who do not like him just because he could be a little bit much, his characters are often misogynistic. And basically, the soft version of Chuck Polonik is Craig Clevenger, and um, one of my favorite books is The Contortionist Handbook by the man himself. This is about a master manipulator who is currently being evaluated in a hospital by either um, an investigator or a psychiatrist, I don't remember, and the book is partially told in the present tense of him talking to the evaluator and partially the past tense of how did I get here? And Craig does all the same stylistic things that Polonik does. He repeats lines, he uses very dark themes, um, but this just felt like the less intrusive and less gruesome version of it. Yes, there's um, a lot of drugs and a lot of, you know, identity changes, but there's also a very beautiful love story that underlies this, and that's one of the things that made it one of my favorite books, that all the softness in it was so unexpected. And an example of that is my favorite line from this, which is, I was floating in the calmest hurricane eye of the deepest love I had ever felt for anyone in my life. Up next, we have another handbook, which is The Poisoner's Handbook by Deborah Bloom. This is the one and only nonfiction book I have ever read and absolutely loved with all of my heart. This book is about the development of forensic toxicology in 1920s New York. Um, Charles Norris and Alexander Gettler, who are basically the two fathers of modern forensic toxicology, um, it, this follows their story and basically each chapter is a different element or, you know, a different compound and talks about how that affected the city and how they then dealt with it. So I found it, I just found it very easy to read and the topic interests me um, and, you know, I ended up just loving Alexander Gettler by the end. I don't have a favorite line, but my favorite chapter is the one about Thalium, which is chapter 11. Next we have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, which is a book of much controversy and I made a whole video on this in like 2014 maybe? I'll link to that below. This is about a middle-aged man named Humbert Humbert who falls in love with this like 12 year old named Dolores Hayes, um, which is creepy and wrong. The thing that makes this one of my favorite books though is the way that Nabokov writes it. Um, because, you know, obviously objectively I think that Humbert is in the wrong here even if Dolores ends up falling for him. Um, but the way that Nab Nabokov writes Humbert Humbert, you end up sucked into the story and there will be times and lines where you'll be like, wow, that was beautiful. And then you realize, oh shit, no. Next we have the non-novel interlude, starting with Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Dr. Faustus is about this very intelligent man named Dr. Faustus, who is just bored with all the things that he's already learned. So he makes a deal with the devil that um, one of the devil's helpers, Mephistopheles, will be basically his personal servant for 24 years, and then his soul is sold to the devil for the rest of eternity. And just the way that Faustus's mind goes back and forth between good and evil, and there's all of this subtle homoeroticism between um, Mephistopheles and Faustus, and um, I saw this live uh, at the Swan Theater in Stratford-upon-Avon a couple years ago, and it changed my life, and reading it was not quite the same experience, but it's still my favorite play of all time. And my favorite line in this is, 
Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. It's very beautiful and gay. Up next we have Hamlet, which is my favorite Shakespeare. This is some old, old, beautifully smelling copy of it. I love the complexities. I love that Hamlet is so torn up. And, um, you know, there are a lot of ways to think of Hamlet that he's just an angsty boy, even though he's literally 33, that he's very indecisive. Um, I like to think of it that he is cold and calculating the entire time. He knows what the fuck he's doing and he will get it done. He just has to wait for the right time. Um, and I find that there's no character that lacks, that it's just kind of this complex, interesting um, an ensemble of characters that make up one very dramatic and sad play. And my favorite quote from Hamlet is, who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life without the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose boring no traveler returns puzzles the will. Up next we have two poetry books by Andrea Gibson. The first is called The Madness Vase and the second is called Pansy. I think that Pansy is a better book of poetry, but I think it is very interesting to look at these two together. In The Madness Vase there is a storm going on and Andrea doesn't know how to deal with it, that she's making all these mistakes and all this shit has gone on in her life and she just doesn't quite know where to go. And in Pansy, it feels like the storm is over. It feels like I have done all this shit and all this shit has happened to me and I'm finally ready to talk about it. I'm ready to write about my mistakes and not be like, what do I do with what's going on? And um, I actually read them in chronological order. I read this one very recently and I just found it absolutely inspiring. Um, so if you're gonna read one, I'd recommend Pansy. But I think um, seeing the development over the two is what makes it so special. And my favorite line from either of these books is from Pansy from the very last poem. You curse like a sailor and you love like the war is finally over and you've just come home and you're screaming my name and running down the dock in the harbor. And finally of this section, we have Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. This is one of my favorite musicals of all time and obviously it came from this graphic novel. I just feel like after reading this, I personally know Alison and Bruce Bechtel. I feel like I have pried almost too much into their lives. Like when you listen to Carrie and Lowell by Sufjan Stevens and you think, oh my God, I know too much about Sufjan and his mother, um, stepmother rather. Um, and that's how I feel about this. Nonetheless, although it feels vaguely intrusive, um, it is a beautiful, beautiful telling of, um, of a young daughter and finding out that her father is gay and also abuse and just all of these complicated things, finding out that she was gay and she just interweaves them so beautifully and you know, it's a graphic novel so it's got um, beautiful drawings and I'm massively impressed by them. Um, and yeah, I love this. Moving on to young adult fiction, first up we have Last Night I Sang to the Monster by Benjamin Allier Sainz. This is a book about a teenage boy named Zach who's an alcoholic who's at a rehab center and doesn't totally remember how he got there. So he has, you know, he has a lot of feelings about forgetting and about this monster inside of him. And I just remember whenever I read this, the moment when he remembers is the most heart-wrenching moment in, in literary history, let's be real. Um, Saints has another well-known novel, which I will talk about next, but I find this one just to be a lot more raw. And, you know, he has all these things where he repeats, like, little verbal tics that sometimes can get annoying, but it makes it feel very genuine, as if someone's telling the story to you. And my favorite line from this is, I've lived 18 years in a season called sadness where the weather never changed. I guess I believed it was the only season I deserved. I don't know how, but something started to happen. Something around me. Something inside me something beautiful. Next is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allier Sainz. This is about two boys named Aristotle and Dante, and it's kind of a nothing happens book. There's no one event I could tell you about, it's just kind of their friendship and the things that happen. The strength of this book is the strength of the characters. Um, the fact that there aren't that many, so you get to know all of them really, really well, and it feels so genuine. I don't know what page this line is on, but I know my favorite quote from this book is something akin to, I bet you could find all the secrets of the universe in someone else's hand. Up next we have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is my favorite fantasy YA novel of all time. It's basically about these two teens, Celia and Marco, who are trapped in this competition that both of their um, respective fathers have put them into. Their fathers are also magicians and they basically had a bet of who can, uh, who can raise the better magician and Celia and Marco don't know that this competition is basically to the death. This book skips back and forth between timelines, so you have to pay attention to the date that it says on each chapter. But again, just the key thing about this book is how it's written. It has some of the most beautiful prose of any novel I've ever read, and that's the thing that I appreciate the most. My favorite line from this comes from the very beginning. The circus looks abandoned and empty, but you think perhaps you can smell caramel wafting through the evening breeze beneath the crisp scent of the autumn leaves. 
a subtle sweetness at the edges of the cold. Up next, we have two books by David Levithan, Every Day and its companion novel, Another Day. Every Day is about this soul figure existence named A who wakes up in a different body of a different person every day hence the title, uh, and A one day falls in love with this girl Rhiannon, which is a problem for A because they never stay in the same body, so they have to then deal with that. It's a very unique concept. I'm a big fan of inexplicable sci-fi fantasy in YA novels. Like, it never gets explained, but that's cool because you just follow the emotion and the story of the characters. So that's Every Day. And then Another Day was published recently, and it's the exact same thing but told from Rhiannon's point of view. And I thought it was going to be boring and cheesy and a sellout, but it was actually just as beautiful. I think it is um, the most powerful if you've read Every Day already, but um, on its own even, and especially as a companion novel, I found it really beautiful and amazing, and I would recommend if you've read Every Day and are thinking this is probably just some shit, it's a lot better than some shit, man. It's really good. And the last book of this video is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. It is a historical fiction novel that takes place in, I think, 18th century Iceland. It's about this murderess who has to live with this normal family um, until she is going to be executed. This also switches back and forth between points of view and also time period and all of this cool stuff. And of course, this family doesn't really want to host this murderess, but you get to follow the story of the family and of her and figuring out the truth, and it's just very very beautiful. I don't know where in this book my favorite line is, but I know it's, I don't want to be remembered, I want to be here. So those are my favorite books. I'm sorry this was probably very, very long. Um, honorable mentions go to the Mysterious Benedict Society series and the prequel, um, Looking for Alaska, Winter Girls, uh, Fight Club, Oh, there are so many others! I love a lot of books. I'm going to link all the books I mentioned um, down below on Goodreads. I'm also just going to link my Goodreads profile. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and you will see me next time.